Did you know that everything in the Old Testament pointed to Jesus? The Old Testament was and still is a shadow of things to come. Everything down to the tiny worm that died on the tree and secreted the scarlet dye used to color the curtains in the tabernacle pointed directly to him. Some of the details regarding the original Aaronic priesthood in Exodus 28 and Leviticus 8 provide a deeper glimpse into this shadow. Now the process of performing the sacrifice of atonement sounds insane by postmodern standards. The priestly garments alone would be unbearable. For example, the ephod, which was the outermost vest worn over two other primary garments, contained just short of 42 pounds of gold. Add all the heavy linen, chains, precious stones, and bells, along with the miter the priest wore in his head, and you've got at least 100 pounds of priestly armor to bear. And that's just the physical part. Exodus 28:29 says that Aaron bore the name of the children of Israel in the breastplate of judgment upon his heart. Now this points to Jesus bearing the sins of the world on the cross, the heaviest point of which was the moment the Father turned his face from the sin Jesus bore as he fulfilled the prophetic words in Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Leviticus 8 describes the original sacrifice, and all the Israelites were required to attend this shadow of today's church services. It might be worth noting that nobody said a word the entire time. Now the priests began by laying hands on the bull to identify themselves with it and the sins of Israel. The blood and gore that ensued was a depiction of what the Israelites deserved in contrast with the mercy of God. All those present meditated on it and it was a shadow of the final sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. Now, there are too many poignant and sacred details to list here, but consider that the fat and internal organs that we normally throw away were burned on the altar as a sacrifice offering. Meanwhile, the hair and flesh were taken outside the camp and burned with the dung. And just in case you miss the irony here, maybe ask yourself, how much do I spend in a year on clothing, cosmetics, and hair? In Romans 7, Paul addresses the reality of sin. What he wills to do, he doesn't. What he swears he won't do, that he does. His conclusion, oh, what a wretched man I am. Who will save me from this body of death? Now, mind you, that's the Apostle Paul talking, not a U.S. politician. In any case, the body of death refers to a particularly gruesome practice in Paul's day, whereby the decaying corpse of a murder victim was hung from the murderer's neck. Most times it resulted in the killer's death. Paul uses this analogy to depict our sin. Not sin as we define and compare it among our fallen postmodern selves, but sin as God defines it and as compared with his holiness. Now, most churches and Christians today skip the Old Testament depiction of sin entirely. In Romans 7, well, that's legalism, brother, and we're under grace, so let's not be Pharisees, okay? We're all about his love in Romans 8, where there's no condemnation. Our job is to make sure everyone knows their Enneagram and no one feels shame. But here's the thing. We don't talk about sin, let alone deal with it in ourselves and certainly not among ourselves. It's all about numbers and money and the legacy of leaders. That's why we have pornified pulpits leading woke Marxist Christians, QAnon Christians, Christian witches, anarcho Christians, Christian shamans, prosperity Christians, grave sucking Christians, and just 6% of Americans with a biblical worldview. And if you want my opinion, and I figure you do if you're still listening, we need to get back to the foundations of our faith where turning our heads in denial of Ephesians 5.11 is not mistaken for turning the other cheek. And do you want a lost, broken, and sin-filled world to listen to the message of Romans 8? And that begins with shutting our mouths, staring at our sin in the face, until we break and weep, both individually and corporately. Maranatha. Maranatha.